You may know that most of the energy in a factory is being consumed on the factory floor. And with stepping to advanced silicon, like silicon carburet, um, that kind of power consumption can be significantly reduced. for engineers, the podcast you just have to listen to if you're interested in what's going on in the semiconductor market. Today, we're talking about industrial automation with my colleague Ingo Hecht. Ingo, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Ingo Hecht. I'm application marketer at Infineon at the Green Industrial Products Division. I'm with Infineon now for more than 10 years and right now focusing on industrial automation. Well, thanks for being with us today. Um, so let's jump right in. Um, before we start talking about industrial automation, let's maybe take a look back. So right now we are in industry 4.0. Everyone's talking about industry 4.0. Was there an industry 3.0 or a 2.0 or even a 1.0? There was definitely. Let me start with the industry 1.0. Uh, that goes back to uh, James Watt when he invented the steam engine in the late 18th century. And that one helping to have uh, uh, humans, human workers uh, being yeah, relieved from hard uh, mechanical work. Um, Industry 2.0 was beginning of or before First World War, when uh, Henry Ford in US invented the conveyor belts and with that one manufacturing the Ford A model, for example. Um, Industry 3.0 was uh, in the 70s, 70s, 80s of, of last century. Um, that one was uh, mainly driven by computation uh, of uh, of the manufacturing flow and as well by manually or by automatic handling of machines. Right now we are with Industry 4.0. That comes along data acquisition. That comes along data communication within the factory. This comes along data processing, data analytics, and all that kind of uh, yeah data processing. I would say. Okay, so it sounds like Industry 4.0 is all about data. Um, so industrial automation, uh, what is driving the trend of this? I basically see three trends driving industrial automation. Uh, the first one is uh, industrial productivity, which means increasing the throughput of, of manufacturing in, 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 in the factory, um, producing high quality on a continuous high level and reducing cost per products, overcoming supply chain issues, and as well keeping logistics efforts low. Second item is sustainability, which means um, re increasing the energy efficiency and as well using green electric energy. And last but not least, generally reducing the uh, uh, consumption of, of any resources. And third item is somehow human resource related. Um, Right now, Western uh, countries are facing a, a lack of skilled workers, employees on one hand. On the other hand, COVID showed us during the past two years that uh, um, the reduction of uh, workers in factories may as well reduce the risk to have shutdowns in factories. That is what we were facing during COVID. And replacing workers uh, by uh, machinery, by robots, could avoid that kind of shutdowns. Uh, so you mentioned productivity, sustainability, and addressing the worker shortages. Mm -hmm. How do Industry 4.0 technologies address these challenges? In, let me first elaborate a little bit on what Industrial 4.0 exactly means. I, I was already mentioning this. Basically, it means the digitalization of a factory, uh, making use of internet connectivity to exchange digital data. Um, digital data typically comes from the factory floor from uh, um, from supply chain, from warehouse systems, uh, reflecting the status of uh, manufacturing and the, uh, the production flow. Industry 4.0 as well means uh, exchanging data on all kinds of level within the factory, from the factory floor to the uh, uh, control level, to a supervisory level, up to the cloud. This can be done wireless or wireless or, or wired based. So industry 4.0, in particular means exchanging that kind of data. And last but not least, not to forget this, um, the data needs to be processed. There is software behind, there is um, algorithms behind, there is um, 
artificial intelligence behind, there is machine learning, all those key buzzwords that come along data and its processing. And this is the, the key on, on uh, Industry 4.0 or IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things that we talk about. Do you have any concrete examples of how this technology is revolutionizing manufacturing? Yeah, let me take uh, three examples and referring back to the items or the, the issues that industrial automation is facing. Um, the first one was uh, resource optimization and sustainability. Um, for example, in Industry 4.0, we're talking about uh, digital twins. Digital twins means a virtual copy of physical goods and processes. And uh, by this, for example, once a factory is planned, this can be virtually done up front to the factory. And by this, resource can be, resources can be uh, saved and as well energy with, uh, uh, with uh, doing this virtually. Time to market is as well a very important thing. Um, yeah, referring to the second item, increased productivity. Uh, data is typically, typically uh, um, derived from the factory floor, from from raw material in the in the warehouse, from semi finished finished good, or from production flow, um, for example, uh, in the retail up to the retail warehouse. Um, with digital data, it's it's well known known where products are at which point and of time they are where and what needs to be done. And um, if this is perfectly managed and uh, processed, I mean the data. Um, Standby times and uh, low load conditions can, for example, be saved by this as well, doing some significant uh, uh, saving of energy that may be achieved as well. And during production flow, um, topics like condition monitoring, state of health diagnostics, predictive maintenance is as well an important part of um, uh, Industry 4.0. With that as well being done, uh, downtimes can be avoided and uh, production loss can as well be minimized. Okay, so with predictive maintenance, you can predict when your machines are going to need repairs or um, updates before they do, right? Exactly, but this needs to be de detected via sensors. We are digitally da digital data that is coming from sensors and being processed either via edge computing or even in the cloud. And by this um, uh, indicating, well, a machinery needs to be replaced or some parts of it needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. I think you kind of touched on two major trends that we see a lot uh, today, digitalization and decarbonization in the sustainability area. How are semiconductor solutions helping achieve these two major trends? Let me give you a couple of examples how semiconductors contribute to digitalization and decarbonization. I was talking about uh, sensors already, semiconductor sensors, talking about um, pressure sensors, current sensors, or position sensors, those are typical semiconductor products that we from Infineon, for example, should provide and supply that provide data into the entire factory system and data that later on can be processed. One ex other examples are power semiconductors. And here um, we're talking about uh, silicium carbide, for example. Um, you may know that most of the energy in a factory is being consumed on the factory floor, at machines, at motors, at uh, at anything that is consuming high high currents. And with stepping to advanced silicon, like silicon carburet, um, that kind of uh, power consumption can be significantly reduced. Two other things that I would like to mention. Um, I was talking about communication within the factory, which can be wireless or wired. Wires, wireless, for example, any kind of RF, radio frequency semiconductors, do uh, contribute, for example, um, to a campus network within a factory that let, let's that has um, autonomous mobile robots or uh, autonomous guided vehicles being communicating with the with the entire factory system. And last but not least, not to forget, communication involves as well security aspects. Though a lot of data transfer is being done between factory floor and cloud and so on and so on, this needs to be a secure data transfer and secure semiconductors, hardware security, hardware-based security contribute significantly uh, to digitalization and um, a safe work of a factory, including cloud communication, for example. Okay, so you mentioned a lot of different hardware sensors, power semiconductors, um, our solutions for security and connectivity. 
Is there anything beyond semiconductors that are very important for industrial automation? Absolutely. I was touching in the beginning already the aspect software. Um, well, we as Infidian, we are selling hardware, we are selling semiconductors, definitely. But um, we need to think beyond this, So, which means we know our semiconductors be best and we know our semiconductors, how they do behave in applications. And based on this, we are right now working on uh, providing physics-based uh, hybrid models that um, do take sensor data and uh, create digital twins representing dynamic machinery behavior and interactions. With that ones, uh, our customers that are using these models, they can achieve the following targets. They can improve the predictive maintenance. They can improve uh, or optimize system performance. And they can as well the, improve the energy management within their operation or the operation of their system. What we are doing with our models as well, we are permanently training them or train them, improve them, that with every training cycle, um, that kind of uh, targets may be achieved better. So we are selling semiconductors, definitely, but uh, we are looking as well into applications and uh, how we and our semiconductors may provide benefit to the system uh, operators and the, the ones that are applying uh, semiconductors. Oh, so it sounds like a very complex system. So I assume people that design these systems, the system designers, they probably have a lot of challenges on their plate, right? Right. So it, the challenges basically go back to the three items we were talking about in the beginning. It's energy efficiency that they need to think about, um, keeping power loss uh, small. Um, for example, another one is... Um, Avoiding cooling, for example, in a control cabinet, um, keeping the power consumption of uh, semiconductors low to have uh, no or to have no need for a, a cooling fan, for example. Um, smaller footprint is very important, uh, which means the the density of system, for example, in a control cabinet, should be increased to have it becoming smaller and smaller. And software, and we were talking about this. Um, Developing intelligent algorithms, thinking about, about for example, um, about a machine vision camera that needs to detect patterns and to detect by this uh, failure on a, a conveyor belt or uh, mismanufactured uh, devices on a conveyor belt. And last but not least, important point is the topic cloud and edge computing. Um, is it sensitive towards data? Is it okay to transfer data into a cloud or is it better to have uh, or to do some, some uh, edge computing of latency reasons, for example, and as well to be closer to the manufacturing line? This is as well a point the, the developers, in this case in particular, software develops, developers need to think about. Okay, yeah. And important to understand the whole system then. Sure. Okay, so I mean, industrial automation, it seems very complex. Industry 4.0 already covers a big range of information. Is there even room for Industry 5.0? What would that look like? <laughs> good good question. Well, yet uh, the experts are not yet talking about Industry 5.0. Um, what could indicate into this direction would be or could be um, augmented reality or augmented reality apps. I'm thinking about um, applications that have the operator um, taking over the role of a robot, for example, which means the operator can look into, into the robot and see and uh, detect, for example, why a robot is stopping. So this can be done by augmented reality apps. Partly it's already realized, but officially in Industry 5.0 is not yet in place, I would say. But at least that kind of augmented reality could indicate into that direction. Okay, exciting times. That all looks Absolutely. pretty bright. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Ingo, for joining us and talking um, through industrial automation with us. So for everyone listening out there, thanks for joining us. Be sure to stay tuned for much more on the semiconductor industry. Thank you very much. Thank you.